Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? Well, a commenter on my video that I produced uh, called uh, something like Genesis and the Missing 100 Pages, the guy's name was Barry O'Leary, and he asked me a great question, which really kind of ushers in something I've been wanting to talk about, which is, what do I expect from a generic role-playing system? Uh, so Barry O'Leary asked, you know, isn't Gen Genesis like a toolbox? You know, rather than like a ready-to-go RPG. Now, if I bought Star Wars from Fantasy Flight Games, I'd expect that it was plug-and-play. We could just pick it up, and it's got everything we need to go ahead and start running the game. But Genesis is more of like a toolbox, so that, you know, we would require some work from the GM and the players, right? And so, you know, I feel bad, sort of, that, you know, I don't want to be bashing Fantasy Flight Games. Um, and I, you know, I'm going to use Genesis as the example because this is the game that has disappointed me. Uh, but I'm, you know, hopefully going to talk more about like what I want f from a generic role-playing system, period. But I'm going to talk mostly about Genesis. Um, and I also, it, I have mixed feelings about this because, and maybe it's more important to me, which is why I'm more upset, because I like this system. I want to play this system. It's well-designed. <laughs> I find it very, very compelling. I want to use it for more than just Star Wars, which is why I was excited about the Genesis system. So let's see how Genesis builds itself. So I'm going to read something off their website. Genesis is a role-playing system designed for flexibility and adaptability, specifically tool to work with any setting imaginable. Okay, we already know that if it use those mechanics, it's going to produce pulp. It's not going to do everything. Okay, that's fine. I know. The Genesis Core Rulebook not only contains an overview of the rules and how the innovative narrative dice system works, but everything a GM and players need to run adventures in five completely different settings. Everything you need. Everything from equipment to adversaries, character abilities, to an overview of narrative tropes. All is provided in the core rulebook for Genesis. No, it's not. And that is what got me upset. Now, it doesn't bill itself as a toolbox, but that's as good, as word, uh, good of a word as any. So, okay, let's call it a toolbox. What they promised me was a toolbox. What I got was a machine shop. It had some tools in it. But the rest of the tools that I would need, all the everything I need, well, they gave me a machine shop. They gave me tools with which I could then make the other tools that I would need to, to run, you know, a game. And just from equipment list, magic, you know, the things I talked about before, all the stuff I expected to be in that game. And, you know, I am not averse to messing around with stuff. I'm like, it's me, for crying out loud. I've spent countless hours, days, weeks, months, hopefully not years, you know, messing around with all kinds of stuff in OSR games, tweaking rules, all the house rules. I mean, go look through, you know, it's me. Just go look through my channel, you know. Um, you know, I, I'm not averse to that, but that's, you know, my time's valuable. And that's not how this game was built. You know, that's not how the system was built, and n nor is that what I expect from something that's supposed to be a generic role-playing system. Now, Star Wars Core Book, you know, costs you 60 bucks. Doesn't matter whether you buy Edge of the Empire, Force and Destiny, um, Age of Rebellion. They're all 60 bucks. They all contain, you know, lots of the information, all the equipment lists and whatnot. Um, so, like, okay, so if I can't get all this information... You know, it's not, if it's not all in Genesis, what am I going to do? Am I going to spend like 10 or 20 hours making up all the rest of the stuff, using the machine shop they provided me, figuring out like, okay, you know, how can I make equipment and tools and blah, blah, blah. Or let's say I make 15 bucks an hour, okay? Am I going to take four hours of my time, get the 60 bucks together, and go buy Star Wars because then I can just take that book and yank everything out of it. That has everything I need to then, you know... Uh, run the game in, uh, in, in in a different genre. So what do I expect from a generic system that's based upon an existing game? Because Genesis was based upon an existing game. It was based upon the you know very successful, very well-developed, well-made Star Wars game from Fantasy Flight. What I expect from them uh, is that they're going to strip the veneer off of the setting and genre. Yeah, and off of this, uh, and just expose the system and the statistics underneath it. You know how it works, the equipment list, all that kind of stuff. That's what I'm paying for. When I'm giving you that extra forty dollars, what I'm saying is, you take the time to strip all that veneer off of, to take all the Star Wars off of everything, and just leave me the bare bones, the generic version of it. You know, because if I pay my sixty bucks to buy a Star Wars book, then it's going to take me a certain amount of time to strip all that veneer off of it. That's why I want the generic system. Because to be quite honest, if I want to play some kind of pulp heroics in you know nineteen thirty six, but instead of using the ubiquity rules, I want to try the Fantasy Flight Games Genesis rules. You know, it's going to take me a little while to strip all that stuff off the Star Wars, but I could do it that way. That's why I want Genesis because 
It's supposed to have all that kind of stuff in there. But what Fantasy Flight Games did was not only did they strip off the veneer of the genre and of the setting, um, they also stripped the game of many of its elements. And elements, unfortunately, which they will be happy to sell you later. And that's the kind of stuff that irritated me. Um, like, imagine a D20 SRD, because you can take, you know, the Pathfinder game, for example. Look at Pathfinder, strip all the Pathfinder off it, all that kind of stuff, and use those uh, statistics and all the lists and whatnot to run all other kinds of games, if that's what you want to do, if you want to play D20. But imagine a, a D20 SRD that didn't uh, contain most of the equipment, didn't contain most of the spells, didn't contain most of the monsters. You know, it's a machine shop at that point. It's not a toolbox. Or imagine that if Exile Game Studios, <clears throat> the producers of Hollow Earth Expedition, one of my favorites, you know, say, they say, okay, you know, the entire ubiquity system is really contained within, you know, their original core book, plus, you know, like, say, something like, uh, Secrets of the Surface World or Mysteries of the Hollow Earth, one of those two books. All of Ubiquity, all you know, the Ubiquity core rules are in here. And Exile Game Studios, which owns Ubiquity, you know, Jeff Combo said, you know what, we're going to do what everybody's been asking us to do. We're going to produce a generic version of Ubiquity. Hooray! But then you buy it, and like all of a sudden, like you open it up, and there's statistics for like a revolver and a knife. And there's maybe like uh, one or two examples of a spell. And maybe like there's a, uh, I know, a dog, a uh, cultist, and a horse. You know, <laughs> people would be upset. They'd be like, you, you've lied to us. You haven't given us the entire, you know, uh, system. And that is essentially why something like me gets mad. They, 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 would, they would have, Exile Game Studios would have stripped the game out of, of all of its elements. They would have given me maybe part of the system, or you know, most, the, you know, most of the system itself. Like, how does the dice system work and all that kind of stuff? How do you make a character? Blah, blah, blah. But they would have stripped it of all these other elements that I would have been ex expected to be in there. Because you can make them generic. Um, so to be honest, like, you know, I can convert Pathfinder if I want to use a D20 for anything. I can convert, you know, Hollow Earth Expedition. I can take my time and effort to do that, strip the veneer off myself to run, you know, anything I want to in Ubiquity. Uh, I could use OSR. I could just take Lamentations of the Flame Princess or BX, strip all that, the fantasy off of it, and, and run anything else. I don't necessarily need to go buy things like White Star if I want to run a game like that. And if I want to use the narrative dice system to run something else, I can just go ahead and buy a Star Wars book for 60 bucks, strip all that stuff off myself. I have the Star Wars book now, and now, you know, I've got more of the system. There, actually, it's weird, because I was just looking up some stuff in Mithras, because I'm playing in a game, you know, Mythos Mithras, and there's more... It doesn't build itself as a generic, you know, game. It's essentially RuneQuest at this point, where, you know, what it is, uh, you know, the, or the open quest, you know, whatever the heck it happens to be. There's more stuff in there, I think the page count might be the same, might even be a little less. There's more usable stuff in there, um, in that, in Mithras, than there is in the Genesis Core book. Heck, I played the game of Cortex with JDRD3 a little while ago. The Cortex books is like 168 pages. I went back and flipped through there, the equipment list, the monster list. There's more in there than there is in Genesis. It's more of a complete generic role-playing system. And we'll talk a little bit about the economy of scale. You know, may just talk a little bit more about the finances because part of what I noticed was like you buy a Star Wars book, um, any one of those core books. Like I said, they cost you sixty bucks. They're about four hundred and fifty some odd pages each. It's going to cost you thirteen point three cents a page, right? You buy the Genesis book, two hundred fifty ish two uh, pages. You know, forty dollars, like sixteen cents a page. It's more. Now, something like Beanstalk, which looks great. I'm like, you know, like, man, that looks cool. My friend Brian is saying, you know, we want, you want to play in a game of this? I'm like, yeah, that sounds really, really cool. That's another 250 pages or whatever. It's, it's 50 bucks. It's 20 cents a page. You know, and I get, okay, there's an economy of scale that's involved here. The uh, things like Genesis, things like Beanstalk, they're not, they're going to be more of a limited run. They're not going to make as much money off that line. Now, I understand you know, how that works. Something like, let's say, Desolation, you know? It's a bit of an expensive book, but like, you know, you know, it's it's not too many people are going to have Desolation. In fact, you know, what's really expensive right here is this uh, Delta Green slipcase right here. Pretty expensive, you know? Not too many people are playing this. We ought to actually have tattoos on ourselves or something like that to identify ourselves to each other. It's economy of scale because you're not selling that many units. But 
to put it into perspective as a consumer, because that can be a bitter pill to swallow sometimes. That, oh, you have to pay more for this book because of the economy of scale, uh, more for the page count, but just more for the book. But I, I, I'm willing to accept, just like I'm willing to accept that I'm going to have to pay, you know, a premium price for something like Delta Green or for Desolation. Uh, I'm willing to accept that, like, if I buy a base from, you know, Michael Tobias Designs or Federa, these are limited run instruments. Part of it is a premium price but it's because it's the economy of scale. They just don't make that many of these things to begin with. They need to make a living. But if I'm buying something from Fender and I'm buying a bass guitar or a Stratocaster or something from there, and, okay, maybe if I'm buying a master-built instrument and it's really high quality, I understand, well, this is a really good instrument. I'm going to pay for the quality. But if they're making some kind of limited run of a signature series for, you know, so-and-so, some bass guitar player that everybody thinks is hot right now, and I go pick up that bass guitar or that Stratocaster, and they're charging me, like, $1,500 for it, and I pick up the American Standard one for, like, 900 bucks, and the quality is the same, I'm not buying the more expensive instrument. I don't give a hoot about the economy of scale at that point because you're this big company. You're gonna make. You're gonna be okay, and I'm not paying for anything extra. I'm just you're charging me that much more money because you can. You know, that doesn't you know sit well really well with me. You know, so you look at something like um, Star Wars. I want to play Star Wars. Okay, it's gonna cost me sixty dollars if I you know to buy, play like uh, Age of Rebellion. So I'm playing Age of Rebellion, with my friends. All right, sixty dollars. But what if I want to play Beanstalk? Well, it's going to cost me $40 for Genesis, okay? But it's not really complete, and I want to play Beanstalk, okay? So it's going to cost me $90, because I have to buy the Genesis book for $40. Then I have to buy Beanstalk for $50. It's going to cost me more money for something that doesn't have to pay, as far as I know, any kind of licensing fees for an IP to anybody, but they have to pay you know, licensing fees to Lucasfilm, you know, for Star Wars, you know, that just irritates me a little bit. So at the end of the day, you know, I expect from, from a generic role-playing game system, especially one that's, that's uh, taken from an existing game that you made, that you just strip the veneer off that existing game, off of all of the system and off of all of the elements of that game. Don't strip the elements off as well and then offer to sell them back to me. That's irritating. And, you know, to be honest, it's, it's unconscionable. So what do you think about that?